Hi, I'm Jose Medina with Keller Williams, and today I'm here to share with you uh, some of the common pricing mistakes that I see that sellers make when putting their house on the market. So on a daily basis, I get to meet with sellers, talk to them about uh, their house, getting it ready to go on the market, and then pricing it. And it's, it's a tricky conversation because you wanna make sure as, you're, as an agent, that we are not pricing the house too low because we don't wanna leave money on the table for our client. On the same respect, you also don't wanna price the house too high because that could ultimately lead to the house sitting on the market longer than what it should be and ultimately selling for less money. So today I wanna to share with you three different things that uh, we have seen when sellers are pricing their house and they make the mistake of pricing it too high or too low. So the first thing is we wanna take into account any upgrades and the condition of your house. Condition plays a massive role in what the house will sell for. So if you're comparing houses, you need to compare what's the flooring that they have, what's the flooring that I have, how old is their roof compared to how old my roof is, um, what's their kitchen like, what's their bathroom like compared to ours. So having that condition, the updates, the upgrades that are in each house is a massive part of what the house will sell for. The second common mistake I see, just a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, is pricing per square foot. So many websites that you go out there will, will show what's the price per square foot. Well, that is a very misleading number and a very inaccurate number if you want um, to look at how things are selling. So price per square foot, I've had conversation after conversation, probably at least a dozen conversations with appraisers about this. They they put no weight in it. They don't think it's an accurate way to look at pricing. And so when you're looking at pricing, I would not recommend looking at what's price per square foot. If it's a good deal, if it's a bad deal, whatever the case is, price per square foot is just not accurate. There's too many variables, right? If I look at a three bedroom, two bath in a school district and I pull up price per square foot, not accurate because what's the condition? What's the acreage? What's the garage size? Is there a basement? Is it finished? Like all of those don't play a factor into price per square foot. Completely inaccurate way to look at it. The last thing is, this is the one that I see the most, uh, selecting your agent based on the price that they tell you. I see it all the time. Uh, you get an agent in, they tell you the house is worth 200. Next agent comes in and says, oh, I can get you 225. Here's my caution. Uh, make sure whatever price you're picking on it, that you're sitting down with the agent, that you're looking at all the data with them, right? That you're, they're showing you comparable houses in your neighborhood, that they're showing you how many houses are for sale. Are you in a buyer's market? Are you in a seller's market? Um, you know, what else in this school district is for sale that is your competition? So all of those need to be shared with you. Make sure that that agent that you're picking comes informed, has the data, and is very knowledgeable about your particular area and isn't just tickling your ears with a price that you think is uh, exciting. So those are some of the most common pricing mistakes that I see when I'm talking to sellers. If you have questions about pricing your house, if you have questions about valuation of your house, we would love to sit down and chat with you, talk with you about what it's worth uh, and show you the data. So my name's Jose Medina with Keller Williams. Our contact information's below and we would love to help you. Thanks.